And a very good day to you on this very fine Friday. And I'm really enjoying the fact that at this time, where we are apparently in winter, it's actually still so beautiful out in the sunlight. And I mean, here in Johannesburg, yeah. specifically, the weather has just been phenomenal. Um, so we're going to be telling you about what you should be doing in your garden, as well as in your home garden. That means inside the house. <laughs> and they're one and the same, aren't they? Indoor gardens, outdoor gardens. No, they're very different because what you need to do is totally different, Carrie. The Carrie Goodwin, okay, she's from Life as a Garden. She's like my head garden girl. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I love plants. Yes. So anything we can teach about plants. But there used to be where you used to say you would have an indoor room and an outdoor room. Yeah. And so going from your inside to your outside. And some of the plants these days are both. So we were talking earlier about Hoya, mm -hmm. you know, which... I use, actually I have my Hoya outside and it's on a trellis. I've only ever seen them outside. And then, then now they've got beautiful new variegated ones and they put them onto hoops or they make little standards with them. Mm -hmm. And then you can put them in your home or on a dining room table because they, you know, that waxy layer makes them very forgiving. They don't need any kind of watering. Yeah. And they're pretty, any kind of light. So you've got an so, outdoor room and an indoor garden. <laughs> and talk about, but interestingly yeah. enough about Hoya, because last week was um, the Chelsea Flower Show. Yeah. And I've, I just sat, in the moment I knew I could watch it, I was on and watching. And it was really lovely. But one, what they did this year is they had this whole selection of um, indoor garden spaces. So they actually yes. had these little rooms where the people had done different um, applications with their indoor plants. Oh, wow. And the one that came up so often yeah. in all of these places was Hoya. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's so good. We're yeah. untrained. We are <laughs> so it. untrained. But I mean, the, the whole thing with the garden plants, mm. I mean, indoor garden plants, and we, we have so many people asking us, how do I look after them? And it is yes. different yes. to what you would do outdoors, especially with your very tender plants, because the majority of your indoor plants come from the tropics and the subtropics. Yes. So they need water. And humidity. And humidity, but not too much water. And that's where everything... Now, yes. one thing you were saying the other day, <laughs> and I'm, I kind of like, I have a finger. I don't need one of those things. Oh, the water meter. I think a moisture meter. I think it's, I think especially for officers and for people who aren't sure. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, I want to say a beginner gardener even, but just you get a moisture meter because for your indoor plants, they... They are forgiving, but we tend to think, oh, we have to water them almost as much as we have to water outdoor plants. And yet, because they're all in containers or pot mm -hmm. covers, they don't need as much water. And because they're in an environment, you know, maybe now in winter, you'd have to watch out if they're in a heated room. But where the, air dries out. Where the air dries out. So then you normally put a plate of water nearby or you would, you know, I think somebody who, if you have a lot of indoor plants, anyone, you need a spritz, Mr. Spray spritz, bottle spritz, spritz, yeah. and you use that. And when you walk past, you miss them. That's almost more important than watering them. Mm. I mean, most of your indoor plants, if you're giving them 100 mils to 250 mils every two weeks at this moment, that would be enough water for okay, them. That's less than a so, cup, by the way. 250 mils is a cup, a cup of water. Yeah, and never ice cold water, always tepid water. <laughs> But now it sounds like they're very high maintenance. But they are. No. no my no. goodness. Like life is so hard. Yeah. You've got to look after me. Praise no. me. I'm so No, but they, they I don't think they have they aren't, you, actually. You're no. right. A you little have, bit of water. Don't put them in full sunlight. Yeah. Nice bright lights, some yeah. of them, low lights. You know, I think you have to choose your plants. So when you go to your local garden center or go into the Life as a Garden website, you go and choose them for what your needs are. Mm. So, you know, for flowering plants, you look at your Anthurium. Anthuriums. <laughs> Anthuriums. I always get them muddled up with a snapdragon. <laughs> Anthuriums, yes. Anthuriums. Those are the ones that get those beautiful pink or red flowers that come up yes. like that. Yeah. And now your peace lilies, the spathophyllum, would also gives you a beautiful, beautiful white flower. Yeah. So those are very forgiving. Mm. You know, you can put them in any room in your house. They look amazing. That flower, if you find that the flower, I mean, it should probably last at least six months, if not longer. And then when the flower starts growing a brownie color, you break it off and then it will start sending through a new flower. Mm. Um, so it's really good. You know, you get your begonia elators. Mm. Um, at this, this time of the year, what's looking really nice are your calla lilies. So they're flowering. And then when the Don't bulbs... Don't say calla lily. People won't know what you're talking about. Zantadesia. Yes. Arum lilies in South Arum Africa. Arum lilies. Okay. But you get the colored ones yes. that you put inside for, I want to say winter. Yeah. And then you go and when they finish flowering, you go and plant them outside in a shady spot. Yep. And I think they, the, because they're a bulb, they're a plant that keeps on giving. Yeah. All bulbs are plants that keep on giving. 
Oh, so fabulous. <laughs> yeah. So they're a really good one. You know, if you have a nice sunny spot, like in your kitchen, you want something like a Kalenkoe or a Kalendiva. Mm. But these are all flowering ones. But then what's also been so popular, and I think it's all those plant parents that have started talking about it, is all your leafy greens. Yeah. So your delicious monsters are incredible. You know, Swiss cheese plant, as some people would call say, them. I was going to say, that's what they call them overseas. <laughs> I mean, you know, watching Chelsea, they come up with... Pothos. And I'm like, oh, this <laughs> my children have come to me and said, Mom, look, these pothos are so wonderful. I'm like, I don't know what pothos is because yes. they have different names for things. Yeah, so that's a philodendron scandens. Yes. And they're actually beautiful ones now. And you know what I love about them? I have about four different colors. So you get a, a variegated yellow, you get a variegated with a cream color mm -hmm. in it, and then a variegated with little spots on them. So, and then you get the plain green one. And I've got them all on my bathroom windowsill in different pots. And then they hang from the windowsill down towards the bath. So it mm. kind of looks like a little bit of a tropical feel when I go in. And then in my other bathroom, I have the maidenhair fern, yep. which, oh, I love a maidenhair the best, fern. The beautiful. Adantum, yeah. the stunning. Yes. Yeah. And they need a little bit more moisture, so they do really well. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, the one that Life as a Garden was talking about, which, you know, I like food. Mm. <laughs> food and plants go together is the pancake plant, which is a peperomia. So peperomia peperoides is its name. And it's got beautiful- it sounds like a pizza. <laughs> it, but it, it actually is like a pizza. The, the leaves are pizza shaped. Oh, okay. And then they, you know, like at the heart of the pizza where all your cheese is yeah. gonna sit, there's a little like a yellow white dot there. And they just form these most gorgeous, very round leaves, covered the plant. Mm. Um, so that's a very popular plant at the moment. and. Those are also very easy to care for. Then you start getting the not so easy to care for ones like your calatheas. Yeah. So there's some beautiful Those calathea. are the ones that are the real ones that they turn their leaves up and go all crispy yes. on the edges. Yeah. But you know what? On life as a garden though, mm. it's actually easy enough to find out how to look after your plants because you go yes. onto the website and you say, I've got this plant, what can I do? Yeah. Um, and you look at, and it gives you answers. If there isn't something there that you can actually use, then you send a question, Ask which, an comes, expert. <laughs> which comes to me, and, yeah. and then I tell you what to do. Yeah. But also, I mean, for all of you who are plant parents or have followed the whole Instagram craze and you've got a beautiful room oh, of plants inside, yeah. please send us some pictures. We'd love to yes. actually feature your pictures. And if you're starting out, then do go, if you can, onto any of the sites like... Um, well, the Royal Horticultural Society, and go and have a look at the pictures that they've got of those indoor rooms. <gasps> yes. Well, and I think because we are finding that a lot of people don't have big outdoor gardens anymore. Yeah. So they are trying to, and the benefits of having a plant, we had a customer, I remember, she um, bought four big plants, so different, she bought like ficuses, mm -hmm. and ficus lorata, and she bought the big spathiphyllum sensation, which doesn't flower, but it's got big leaves. And it was she was told by a doctor to put these plants in her lounge mm. for her husband mm. because he was asthmatic. And she said they made such a difference in the their quality. environment and his breathing that he could breathe yeah. in at home now. She says, so everybody, for any kind of a birthday present, everybody they are getting plant now. Because she put just it in the saw lounge. the benefits. Yeah. Yes. The ones for the so, bedroom, I would say, would be your Sansevieria. Yes. Uh, oh, because they know, don't push out uh, carbon dioxide at night and that you want something that keeps on giving you oxygen all day. Yes. So that is very true that when you go and give plants to people who are in hospitals, they often take those plants and put them out. outside of the bedrooms or the hospital wards mm -hmm. in the evenings because they don't want to um, okay. take in our oxygen. But the sense of area, the other thing, so that's the indoor outdoor plant. So we mm. grew, grew up knowing it's an outdoor plant that you find in Mpumalanga in those rocky places. Yeah. Now they've become so popular because they're nice focal, structural, you know, um, trendy, kind of, I want to say, fast plants. Yes, that's the right word, <laughs> architectural plants. Mother-in-law's tongue, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Um, but the benefit of them is if you have places in your house, especially with all the rain that we've been having this summer, that are slightly more damp, is you put one there, and they take a lot of the water vapor out of the atmosphere. Ah. So we had a lady who was having damp in her home, and she went and put it on a bookshelf near. And then she came back like every three months or so and got another one and another one to try and reduce the damp from her walls. So And she said it's just working so beautifully. 
So, you know, plants also have that benefit mm. of, apart from cleaning all the flora, uh, form formaldehydes and benzenes from the cleaning products well, in your they're, house. They're saying they don't know if that actually is true. So we'll really? talk about that at another stage. Yeah. Oh, but okay. the thing is, well, if you've got Sansevieria, yeah. don't put it with your plants that like humidity. because No, 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 absolutely. Yeah. yeah, put it in a dry, <coughs> yeah, dry room. Absolutely. So what else have you got on? Stuff. What else have you got on Life has so, Garden? Because we've got Father's Day is coming up. Oh, yes. Father's Day is a very nice one. And the Life is a Garden activity for Father's Day for to do with the kids is just the best. I can't wait to do it with my, even though I'm not a child, <laughs> for my dad. We're all children to somebody, <laughs> darling. <laughs> so it was to get a wooden box, mm -hmm. but uh, almost in a rectangular shape, and then to fill it with three different pots. Mm -hmm. And in the one pot is going to be almost like a drinks holder for your dad. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle pot, you're going to put a plant. So it could be a peace lily. It could be a succulent because, you know, maybe dads don't like to care for their plants too much. It could be a bonsai, mm -hmm. you know, dads like bonsais as well. And then, then the third one is to put his snacks. So it could be biltong. For my dad, it's going to be wine gums. Yeah. You know, so. so you can so have the little just, thing next to them there yeah. and you can put his drink in there. He can have a snack and he's got a beautiful plant which is looking after him. Exactly. Fantastic. So it's just an idea. I know. I'm so excited. I think well done to life as a garden for that. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, this weekend coming up on Sunday mm -hmm. is World Environment Day. So I think, you know, for me, it's an opportunity to go out into your environment, go and walk along, a, go to a park, go and walk along a river, you know, see if you can help out some way. Otherwise, to bring the environment to you. So yes. one of my favorite things to do, and my birds are hungry, is I feed my birds every morning. So I share some of my fruit with them. I put up, can you believe I have fruit in the house? Actually, that is, if you knew, she, I'm surprised she's not sharing chocolate with them. <laughs> yeah. So actually probably they get more of the fruit than I do, but the fruit goes to them and some bird seed out for them. Otherwise, go into a local garden center, mm -hmm. maybe find some indigenous plants to attract the butterflies like your scabiosa. Plants and aloe. Yes. So I always get into that. You know, my favorite, and I was watching a video on the weekend, is when the little honeybee is coming into the aloe plants because, you know, they're really looking for nectar at this mm, time mm. of the year. And so any plant, especially aloes, has beautiful nectar on it for the bees. You know, the sunbirds mm. also buzzing around everywhere. The strelitzias are flowering gorgeously now. The red hot pokers are seem to be flowering. Um, also really stunning. So there's so much beautiful plants in your environment, whether you go and create your environment in your garden with these beautiful plants or you go and walk around and see what you can see yeah, in the local parks absolutely. that um, are also flowering and just looking really good. Like the grasses, it seems no, quite late. No, the grasses late, are looking amazing. They are. Yeah. I mean, that Natal red top, it just glistens when you drive past it on a pavement or something. So that's so, what you want to be doing. You want yeah. to be getting out, enjoying the environment, go and do something mm. for the environment. And I mean, it may be cold to start off with, but if you're walking nice and fast, and by the way, yeah. if you happen to see a, a, a couple of like really strange women walking along like the spray <laughs> the delta spray <laughs> with an umbrella hat on bright colors that's just me making everybody happy so hopefully i'll see a lot of people on the spray on on environment day yes. but that's all it is if you want any more information mm. of course about what to do with your plants indoors or outdoors or how to get some really great ideas of what you can do in your area because obviously yeah. we talk about Joburg a lot because that's where we are but life as a garden has countrywide for every part of the country of what you should be doing in your garden yeah. at this time. What's good to plant? Yeah, everything. And of course, you Can we keep, just keep going. Keep on talking about it. We could, we could carry on telling you all day, but you know what? But, it's there. Oh, okay, the well, I just got a quick, quick one. Yes. Is when you mentioned the cold, I think, and when I was driving here, I was also listening, you know, people saying how their pets get cold and you're supposed to put the blankets on them. And I thought, don't forget your plants get cold as well. So you should be mulching your plants. Mulch. So, yes. so important. Mulch with compost. So, mulch with compost. Mulch with, you know, we had the discussion whether we're using leaves, preferably only if you've composted them first, mm. or grass clippings if you've composted them first. Um, bark chips, peanut shells. If you want a living mulch, plant a ground cover. And if all else fails and you just want a mulch to protect your soil and everything, you can use pebbles as well. Yeah. But mulch is probably one of the most important things you can do in Especially your garden in at this time of the year. Well, in fact, yeah. in summer. In fact, Some... mulch is just one of the most important. <laughs> you should Compost have it. and mulch, that's yeah. it. Then you'll be absolutely A for Perfect. a Perfect, yeah. So if you need any information, as we said, pop along to lifeisagarden.co.za. It is yeah. the best resource for anybody who's gardening. Absolutely. She contributes to it. I, I try and contribute <laughs> yeah. to it, but you are more than welcome to send us pictures and yeah. and also questions, and we will help you as much as we can. Yeah, Carrie, for sure. Thank you.
Thank you Stay very as much. warm and like, happy <laughs> yeah. as you are. She comes into a room and just brightens it up with her oh, warmth no, and it's positivity. I'm surrounded it's fantastic. by plants. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. We'll catch you again next week with more gardening, how-tos and what not to do. <laughs>